Have you ever told a lie and then had to tell another lie in order to validate it? And then before you know it, you've constructed this intricate web of lies. You've constructed a whole other alternative reality. Things that could have happened. But, but in some senses, this reality, this alternative reality, is more real, more fundamental than what's actually going on in the world. Because it's the reality that you share intersubjectively with the person that you've told it to. And in order for you to achieve the lie, otherwise I presume you wouldn't have wanted to tell it, you have to live up to the lie. You have to act as if it was real. So you're living in the alternative reality and not, not the real one, so to speak. But what if you didn't know that you were actually doing it? What if what you thought were legitimate reasons were just confabulations, um, just random sparks of imagination rather than memory? It would be very difficult to distinguish what reality and imagination were. It would be very difficult to draw a line between them. Well, it turns out there's actually a neurological symptom, a neurological disorder known as confabulation. Um, confabulation can be brought on by brain disorder, split brain patients, or also post-hypnotic suggestion. And these people are often asked questions that they can't possibly know. And it turns out they, they make up reasons. And they, they make up reasons for them being the way that they are. So confabulators will often talk confidently about things that they don't know anything about or things that they can't possibly know anything about. And when they're asked again, they, they just confabulate, they fabricate more answers. So some people confabulate and some people lie, but we all know that. What, what does that have to do with anything? What does confabulation or even lying tell us about the nature of consciousness? So what some people with mental disorders or brain damage might confabulate and some people might be prone to lying. How does, how does that apply to me? Well, it applies in quite a few very deep and meaningful ways in my opinion. Um, firstly, for example, the fact that we confabulate, um, even when we're giving our, our normal narrative, we, we always add a, a little bit of a spin on it because we're seeing it from, from our perspective. So when we retell tales, um, we retell stories, we're constricting reality intersubjectively through our communication, but we're constricting a reality that could be very different for someone else. Well, obviously that's, that's nothing new there, but what does confabulation tell us about the nature of consciousness? Well, I think the fact that it shows there is an, an, an innate ability, a, an innate disposition of people to rationalize, um, even despite the fact that they have any reason to do so. So, you know, we're always coming up with, with the reasons for why we do things. We're always assigning intention to people. We're always thinking about what we believe, we're reflecting on ourselves quite a lot. So we don't only define our reality and our beliefs intersubjectively, but we also rationalize and make sense of things in our own head, so to speak. So how does that relate to confabulation? Well, one of the things that it's important to, co to consider is that we only confabulate when we're giving a probe when confabulation occurs when, when people are pushed to find explanation, they don't just randomly sprout out a bunch of lies, they, they would do it once given a probe. So we can accept that these probes might cause certain people to form rationalizations, but there's no such reason that these probes have to be external. There could be many internal probes in our own in our own brains uh, in our own minds trying to um, form reason form intention then intention and then pass it on to higher function of brain state and I think that is a very important concept and I think we we tend to think that our intentions are, are you know set in stone and real so to speak whereas what I think confabulation shows us 
is that perhaps more often than we think, we tend to rationalise the irrational. So let's take an everyday example. If I were to ask you what your favourite band was, um, you might tell me, I don't know what you guys listen to, but you'll tell me whatever. And then I, I'd ask you, you know, why do you like them? Um, you know, what what particular part of a song is your favourite? And you'd come up with some reason, some explanation, but you might not have necessarily thought about it before. It it might just appeal to you. It might be an ineffable appeal. You might not be able to put it into words, but you'll have to to try and explain it. So you might confabulate some reason for it. I mean, there's a lot of psychological evidence that points to the fact that a lot of what's going on is going on at the subconscious, or should I say without awareness, um, of the person. And, you know, th there are a lot of experiments, um, uh, particularly one with uh, a rope task where the people had to try and tie these two ropes together. And the only way to do so was to swing one of them and then, when it comes back, tie it. Uh, most people didn't get it. Most people didn't figure out a way. But the psychologist of the room, in one of the experimental conditions, flipped one of the tassels on the curtains, which which gave them that little bit of a subconscious hint. But when asked about it, they didn't say that they realised because he told them. They just said it reminded them of something or, well, whatever, they confabulated. They, they didn't realise that they were doing it. I think this makes up a large part of the subconscious drives. I, I don't I don't like to use Freudian perspectives or Freudian terms. It's a slightly different than that, but basically a lot of our action goes on without awareness and the only way that it comes into awareness is through these probes, which can be external or they can be internal. More importantly, these probes can trigger other probes and form a sort of a recursive loop and it's it's these probes that actually make up the the nature of our everyday experience. It's it's these confabulations which shape our very reality itself.